Didn't catch today's Apple keynote? Here's a quick recap of everything that happened. As rumored for months, Apple announced the iPhone SE, an iPhone that packs the power of an iPhone 6S into a smaller form factor, more like the iPhones of yesteryear. It got LTE, Wi-Fi calling, 4K, and 420 frame per second slow-mo video recording. Live photo support, Apple Pay, all running on a 64-bit A9 chip. The 16 gigabyte model will go for $399, the cheapest price an iPhone has ever launched at. The 64 gigabyte model will run $499, it goes up for pre-order on March 24th, and the first units will be shipping March 31st. If you dig the feature set of the iPad Pro, but didn't like the big old 19.9 screen, you'll be pretty happy with today's announcement of a smaller iPad Pro. The original iPad Pro now has a 9.7 inch baby brother, roughly the same size as an iPad Air 2, but for support for things like Apple Pencil, Apple Smart Keyboard, 4K video recording, and more. The screen on the iPad Pro is 40% less reflective than that on the iPad Air 2, but also 25% brighter. It has four ambient light sensors for a feature called True Tone that constantly checks for the lighting in the room and adjusts according to color accuracy. That's particularly great for designers. The new iPad Pro supports Apple Pencil, has a 12 megapixel rear camera, five megapixel front facing camera, also 4K video recording and live photo support. The 32 gigabyte model will set you back 599 with the 128 going for 749. Also, there's a brand new 256 gigabyte model which will go for 899. Pre-orders start March 24th and ship early April. Meanwhile, Apple will continue to sell the iPad Air 2, albeit at $100 less now starting at 399. Apple Watch also got a price drop. The base model will retail for $299 versus the previous $349. You can also buy new woven sports and leather bands in a variety of colors. Now onto software updates. iOS 9.3 ships today featuring night shifts and improvements to notes and CarPlay. Apple TV's tvOS refresh also releases today, bringing support for live photos, folders, voice diction support, including for typing passwords and usernames, which is generally a pain on the Apple TV. Speaking of passwords, Tim Cook didn't shy away from Apple's ongoing battle with the FBI over device encryption, touching on the topic almost immediately, but mostly just reiterating their stance. We need to decide as a nation how much power the government should have over our data and our privacy, he says. We owe it to our customers and we owe it to our country. This is an issue that impacts all of us and we will not shrink from this responsibility. Then, after a quick summary of his environmental efforts, Apple showed the first footage of Liam, a robot they built specifically for disassembling iPhones down to their smallest components for recycling and refurbishing. Well, that's about it. Oh yeah, a happy 40th birthday to you, Apple.